Good morning. Welcome to the Brecon Presbyterian Church uh, for our service on Sunday, the twenty uh, sixth of on the twenty sixth of June. Um, this is going to be a bit of an ad hoc service, just me on my own here. We've had to cancel a service at fairly short notice. The preacher wasn't well enough to come. So I prepared this at short notice and it will be done in a pretty informal sort of way. It's just me on my own here in the church. Uh, just one notice next Sunday will be communion service here in the church, which I will be taking. And so uh, let's just ask God's blessing on this time of worship now. <clears throat> Lord, be with us now. Make yourself known to us. Bless us as we seek to praise you and to fill our minds with your thoughts. May your spirit inspire us. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. <coughs> I'm going to sing Spirit of God unseen as the wind If you know the words please join in And the tune is the skyboat song Spirit of God unseen as the wind Gentle as is the dove Teach us the truth And help us believe Show us the Saviour's love You spoke to us Long, long ago Gave us the written word We read it still Needing its truth Through it God's voice is heard Spirit of God Unseen as the wind Gentle as is the dove the truth and help us believe show us the Saviour's love without your help we fail our Lord we cannot live his way we need your power we need your strength Following Christ each day Spirit of God Unseen as the wind Gentle as is the dove Teach us the truth And help us believe Show us the Saviour's love Our reading this morning is quite a well-known passage about the fruit of the Spirit. The first part, actually, is about the works of the flesh, all the evil deeds which our sinful human nature leads us to do. And then Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit, the Christ-like qualities that are seen in the life of a Christian, because the Holy Spirit is at work in their lives. Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 16. Live by the Spirit. So I say, live by the Spirit, 
and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Paul is saying that if there's hatred, dissension, then the Holy Spirit is obviously not fully at work within a fellowship of people. And if there's immorality, impurity and debauchery, the Holy Spirit is not fully at work. If there's hatred, and if there's idolatry, the worship of false gods and witchcraft, occultism, the spirit is not truly at work. If there's drunkenness and orgies and simply living a hedonistic lifestyle, then the spirit is not truly in charge. But if the spirit is truly in charge, then the spirit produces fruit. And the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So these are the qualities that are seen in a, a mature Christian fellowship of believers. Christ-like qualities, for he himself was like that. And there will be great love and great joy and peace, and there will be kindness and forgiveness and bearing with one another and patience and gentleness and there will be self-control these are all the fruit of the spirit not so much fruits in the plural not the fruits of the spirit but the fruit it's all one fruit really which is basically love these are all different ways of talking about love actually if you love then you will exercise gentleness and self-control and so on so, what can we say about fruit? Well, my experience of fruit, if you're trying to actually grow it rather than just taking it off the supermarket shelf, it takes time. I've got a little lemon tree in my conservatory growing in a pot, and it has so far produced one lemon, and the tree is only about... Well, three foot high, produced a lemon about, a big lemon about that size. And that lemon was so delicious, not too bitter, fresh off the, off the tree. But I'll tell you something about that lemon. It took nine months to mature on the tree. First there was a flower, then a little 
fruit that took a full nine months to mature. Things take time when they have to grow, don't they? Fruit takes time. You don't plant an apple tree and expect to be able to go around the following week and pick apples off it. And so it is with the fruit of the Spirit. It takes time. You don't just become a follower of Jesus and instantly demonstrate all these qualities of love and gentleness and kindness. We've all got besetting sins and these things keep coming back. But as we progress in the Christian life, we should be gradually sanctified by the Holy Spirit that we will become more and more like Jesus, producing more of the fruit of love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness. It takes time. Whereas you can have a great anointing of the Spirit and uh, receive all sorts of spiritual gifts like healing or prophecy or speaking in tongues, you can receive those gifts just in an instant. Fruit, though, is different. Fruit takes time. It takes years of Christian living to start developing a true Christian, Christ-like character. The fruit of the Spirit. And a reflective prayer. A reflective prayer now uh, based on that passage from Galatians. A fruitful spirit. Holy Spirit of God, may love grow within us until it is our true heart. Let joy be our default and make us strong with delight. Give us the peace which is only yours so that all violence in us is stilled. May humble kindness guide our ways and restore the faith of others. Let generosity be our first response to anyone who asks of us. Keep us faithful to all our promises and unwavering in commitment. May gentleness be our trademark and our footprint be light. Give us the measure of a life in rhythm that we may pace ourselves in time with you. Let nothing hold us back from a life that is beautiful. And may your transforming power shape our lives with grace. Amen. I think it's time to sing another hymn, a prayer for God to revive the work of his Holy Spirit in the church. Sleep of death, 
Quick on the smoldering embers now, by thy almighty breath. Revive thy work, O Lord. Create soul thirst for thee. And hungering for the bread of life, oh, may our spirits be. Revive thy work, O Lord. Exalt thy precious name, and by the Holy Ghost, our love for Thee and Thine in flame. Revive Thy work, O Lord. Give Pentecostal showers. A glory shall be all thine own, the blessing, Lord, be ours.